Hey guys, my name is Shreyas and welcome to Simple Chemistry. In the previous video, we discussed the the previous um, the basic ideas of the atom and how they came about. In this video, we're going to be talking about really the first atomic theory. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So here's a brief background. At the time of John Dalton, um, John Dalton's the scientist we're going to be talking about in this video. Uh, Chemists had this basic understanding. So uh, these two, con uh, they had these two things. They knew that elements react with other elements to form compounds, and they knew that elements cannot be cannot be broken down into other substances. That's it. What they did not know was that no idea. They had no idea that atoms or the individual particles that make up matter, the tiny things that make up matter, you know, and elements and compounds were all related. So they didn't, um, they didn't know any of that. All they knew was just these two things. Elements react with other elements to form compounds, and elements cannot be broken down into other substances. They knew that atoms existed, but they didn't know how these two relate, atoms and elements. So Dalton drew this connection between atoms, elements, and compounds. We're going to be talking about that in this video. So Dalton was inspired by Proust's work. Um, Af Dalton, after reviewing um, Pr Joseph Proust's work, hypothesized that the elements were made up of different types of atoms. So he's basically saying that atoms were very um, t little, had different variations from each other, and um, these variations um, create elements. So every element is a variation on the atom, and we're gonna be really um, seeing that, and that it is true. But Dalton is the first person to come up with this idea, and uh, he also believed the compounds were combinations of the, these elements which had reacted. Okay, so basically he was saying that when two or more um, of these very uh, varied atoms come together and they react, that's how you form a compound. So the evidence for Dalton's conjecture uh, came from the law of multiple proportions, and this convinced him of the hypothesis that this theory on atoms was true. Um, the law of multiple proportions is the following. When two elements react to form different compounds, the ratios of the second element combined with one gram of the first element can be reduced to whole numbers. Now this probably makes no sense, so let's go ahead and look at an example where we can illustrate this, okay? So here we have two elements, again it says two elements react. So we have nitrogen and we have hydrogen. And uh, we have one gram of the first element, nitrogen. So for compound A, for one gram of nitrogen, we, we will have 0.144 grams of hydrogen. For compound B, for one gram of nitrogen, we have 0.216 grams of hydrogen. And for compound C, uh, for one gram of hydrogen, we have 0.024 grams of hydrogen. And the law of multiple proportions says that when you have this, the ratios of the, um, the masses of the second element can be reduced to whole numbers. So for example, let's say we take the uh, um, A and C. Let's, uh, actually, this is to A and B, right? So, the ratio between the mass of, um, of hydrogen in compound A to the mass of hydrogen in compound B when you have 1 gram of nitrogen. So we take 0.144 divided by 0.216. And when we reduce this, we'll see this is just a, this is just a whole number ratio. All this is is just... 2 over 3. Okay, you can do the same thing for um, A and C. Let's do that. So 0.216 grams to 0.024. And when you reduce this, we get a calculator. Um, this is just going to be 9 to 1. Okay, and then we can take also B and C, that's the last one that we can get. Actually, I'm sorry, this was B to C, sorry. I didn't realize that. We can take A to C. You can do 0.144 to 0.024. And we realize that this ratio is 6 to 1. Okay, so you see these interesting ratios, you know. Now, how the heck does this relate to anything with atoms and compounds? So this data can be just, um, you know, represented with, uh, with compounds. So let, let me see here that the ratio of A to B is 2 to 3, the ratio of B to C is 9 to 1, the ratio of A to C is 6 to 1. 
All right, so for example, let's say that um, we just assume that the formula for compound C was NH, you know? Let's write that. So compound C is NH. Okay. So this ratio here, A to C, tells us that um, in compound A, uh, there is, you know, there's six times as much hydrogen for every um, for every gram of one gram of nitrogen, you know, because this this ratio here. Okay, so it's six to one. So we can say that because of this, um, the the formula for compound C can be NH. And since there's a six to one ratio, we can just say the formula for compound A is NH six. Right, because this would explain that that ratio again. Right, because between the masses, there's six times as much hydrogen per gram of nitrogen. You can just explain it. You know, nitrogen has um, the compound C has one atom of nitrogen and one atom of hydrogen. Compound A has one atom of nitrogen and six atoms of hydrogen. Therefore, when you have this um, set of data, uh, the ratio between the masses of hydrogen given an equal mass of nitrogen is going to be six to one. And then you can say the ratio of B to C is nine to one. So you can say the formula for compound B is NH nine. You know, because for compound Assuming that compound C has a formula of M, NH, one, one atom of nitrogen, one atom of hydrogen, um, since if you look at the ratio here, since this ratio is telling us for every one gram of nitrogen in, um, in compound B, we're going to have nine times as much hydrogen. So we can easily explain that by saying that the reason for that is because in um, any, that compound B has a formula of NH9, it has nine times as much hydrogen. Uh, in order to uh, nine times as much hydrogen as compound A, or sorry, compound C. So because of that, when you have this, when you have one gram of um, nitrogen um, for each um, compound, B is going to have nine times as much hydrogen as compound C. Uh, this might be a little hard to put your grasp your mind around. Just uh, just realize that what essentially this comp this law of multiple proportions is saying. Is that it's just uh, it's showing you that it's it's that you can let me try to think of this an easy way of putting this. It's showing you that like on a these ratios are just basically telling you the number of atoms. That's all you need to take from this. These ratios are just demonstrating um, how you can these ratios kind of like you have these very complex numbers grams 0.144 grams, but you, these ratios can be like dumbed down on a very atomic level, and we can just simply say that these ratios are demonstrating the number of atoms between the compounds, okay? You know? Um, we can also say that, like, let's say we assume that the formula for um, compound C was N2H2, you know? Okay? So, using that, we can say that um, since the formula for compound C is N2H2, um, and we know that compound A is going to have six times as much hydrogen um, per gram of nitrogen than compound C, we can say that the formula for uh, compound A is going to be N2H12, you know, because we're multiplying this by 12, six times as much more hydrogen. And then we can also say the formula for compound B, since it's nine times as much hydrogen, would be N to H nineteen. You know, there's infinite combinations of this. You know, you can you can do anything like this. You can also say, and the formula for compound A is N H three, and then since compound um, B A has six times as much, you'd say it's N H eighteen, and then you can say compound um, compound B nine times as much is N H twenty seven. You know, on and on and on. So this, he's, basically what he said was like, since these ratios exist, um, you can clearly see that it can just be explained by just having atoms, you know. And H, one atom of nitrogen, three atoms of hydrogen, since this next compound has 18 atoms of hydrogen compared to three atoms of hydrogen, the ratios of the masses is six to one, you know. Very simple, okay. And that convinced him that, yeah, this probably is, this, this these ratios are just basically d demonstrating um, the um, atoms, existent atoms. So what you need to take from this, even though this, if this is confusing to you, is understand what the law of multiple portions is and realize that the ratios are demonstrating um, that you can have atoms. Okay, that's that's it.
So from there, he created this atomic theory, and it consists of four postulates, okay? All matter is composed of small, indivisible particles called atoms. That's the first one. All atoms of the same element are the same, and all atoms of different elements are different, okay? He didn't know how. He just knew that um, atoms were different among each other. So, for example, a carbon atom would be different than a nitrogen atom, okay? Um, third was atoms break apart and re rearrange themselves to form new compounds. And finally, atoms in simple, um, combine in simple whole number ratios to form compounds, so meaning that you can't have two-thirds of an atom you know, in a compound. You just have, like, for example, carbon dioxide, that's one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen. You can't ever have a compound like C two-thirds O three-fifths. You know, it's just their whole number ratios, okay? And uh, those were his four postulates. Um, and, uh, you know, actually... Postulate number two is wrong, and postulate number one is wrong because um, postulate number one says atoms are composed of small indivisible particles called atoms, and actually atoms can be broken down into more complex um, subatomic particles, which we're going to be talking about. And the other one, atoms of the same element are the same; all atoms of the different elements are different. Um, this postulate is also wrong because of this, this um, discovery of something called isotopes. We're going to be talking about isotope, isotopes later in this um, unit, but in case you needed to know this, just be like, this posit 1 was disproven by subatomic particles, and pos postulate 2 uh, was um, disproven by isotopes. And we're going to be talking about what both of these things are later in this unit, but just make sure that you know that 1 and 2 are wrong, but 3 and 4 are indeed correct, okay? And, uh, that's it. Those are Dalton's flaws, you know. Um, but that's it. That's all you have to know for now. Um, make sure you study this. Dalton's atomic theory is as simple as that.